Everyone loves flatbreads. They have a satisfying texture, great flavour and are convenient for dipping or wrapping. But what happens when your flatbread isn't just bread anymore and it has toppings? It may sound like pizza, but the real answer lies in the Middle East. Most countries in the former Ottoman Empire have their own versions of topped flatbreads. Some with cheese, some with za'atar, but the most common of which is the lahmacun. Lahmacun gets its name from the Arabic words lahm bajin, which means meat with bread. These are eaten from Turkey to Armenia and all over the Levant. They each have regional differences, but today we'll be making a Turkish recipe for spiced lamb topped flatbreads. Once you try these, you'll never be able to eat plain flatbreads again. Here's how I make it. So first thing we'll do is make the dough as it needs to rest before we can use it. You can make it by hand, but it's a lot easier if you have a stand mixer as there is a bit of kneading involved. Put the dough hook on your mixer and then pour in 375 milliliters of room temperature milk. Next, add in one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast and mix the two together for a few seconds. If the milk isn't room temperature, the yeast may take longer to start working. Add 500 grams of flour to the mixer and follow that up with one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now you'll need to mix it all together until it forms a dough bowl. Start off with the mixer on a slow speed. Let it mix until all the milk has been absorbed into the flour. When the flour and milk are mixed, turn the speed up to medium high. It will form a sticky ball at first and then will eventually pull away from the sides of the mixer bowl. After five to eight minutes of kneading, check your dough by touching it. It should still be sticky, but should maintain its shape and be springy. You want it to still leave dough on your hand when you touch it. If you're kneading by hand, you would stop at the same stage. When you've arrived at the right texture, you can start working oil into the dough. You'll need to add six tablespoons of vegetable oil to it. Add a tablespoon at a time and knead it into the dough until fully absorbed. Using a mixer, it can be a bit difficult. So if you feel your dough is not absorbing the oil, remove the bowl and knead it in by hand. It might look like it won't work and things are just slipping all over the place, but eventually it will mix in. The reason we add the oil after kneading the dough is because the vegetable oil can inhibit the formation of gluten, which we need to make this dough soft and springy. Work all the oil into your dough and it should now have a slightly oily texture. Using a spatula, fold your dough into a ball. It might not cooperate, but that's okay. Just get it as close to a ball as you can. Grease a bowl with some oil and then pour your dough out into it. Set the dough aside to rest for at least half an hour or till double in size. Before you set it aside, make sure to cover it with some plastic wrap or a kitchen towel to stop it from drying out. While the dough rises, we can prepare the topping mixture, which will process into a paste. Start off by cutting the top and bottom of a brown onion. Chop half of the onion up into quarters and set it aside. Next, peel three large cloves of garlic. Make sure to remove the roots and any brown bits. Follow that up with a green pepper. We'll also need half of this. The easiest way to cut a pepper is to remove the stem, then stand it upside down on a cutting board. This way, you can cut around the core without fiddling around. Do the same thing for a red pepper and set aside half of it. For some extra flavor, I recommend adding a green chili. This will add a little heat, so feel free to remove the seeds if your chili is really hot. Finally, dice two plum tomatoes into large pieces. Try to go for a tomato with a lot of flavor and a low water content. So to turn this into a paste, you should use a food processor. But if like me, you have a small kitchen and don't have a food processor, you can use a blender instead. Start off by adding all the vegetables we chopped into the food processor. So your three garlic cloves, half an onion, two chopped tomatoes, green chili, half a green pepper, and half a red pepper. Add a teaspoon of salt to the vegetables and then wash a bunch of parsley and add it too. Next, you'll need to add a tablespoon of Aleppo pepper flakes. I recommend getting this even if you have other pepper flakes as the taste is closer to a spicy paprika than traditional chili powder. Add in a tablespoon of vegetable oil, then the final two ingredients, 50 grams of tomato puree and 75 grams of Turkish red pepper paste. If you've never heard of it before, get some because it's a life-changing ingredient. It's full of amazing savory flavors similar to smoked paprika. With all the ingredients added, it's time to process them into a paste. Now I've seen a number of different recipes. Some make a paste and some just chop the veg into tiny pieces. I think it cooks better at home if you process it until it turns into a full paste, 
but it's up to you. Process it until all the veg is well combined and you aren't left with any large pieces. Make sure to scrape down the side of your vessel and to overturn the bottom to dislodge any potential stuck pieces of vegetables. Once it's evenly mixed, taste it for seasoning. It should be slightly over salted. If not, add a little more salt in. Next, add your meat to your mixing device. You want 375 grams of minced lamb, but if you can't find it, you can use minced beef instead. The key thing here is to ensure you have a good amount of fat in the meat. 80% meat and 20% fat is a good ratio for this. If you know of a good meat substitute to make these vegetarian, let me know in the comments down below. Mix the meat and vegetables together until they are evenly combined. If you want, you can do this by hand to stop your vegetables from getting smaller, but I prefer it combined to the thick paste forms. This is the texture I had. You can see the little bits of green pepper, chili and onion, and the even red colour from the tomato and pepper paste. Pour it out into a bowl and give it a final mix for good measure, then set it aside until needed. The final thing we'll prepare are some macerated onions to top our lahmacun with. Peel a small red onion and slice it in half. Cut both halves of your onion into strips as thin as you can, then add them to a small bowl. Add half a teaspoon of salt to the onions and mix it really well. The salt will cure the onions and remove the raw flavour while keeping them crispy and juicy. After mixing, add a teaspoon of sumac to the onions and mix once more. Set this aside to cure for about 15 minutes to half an hour. These onions go great on top of a salad, so make extra to use later. We're going to cook the lahmacun on the stove and then put them in the oven to grill. So find a non-stick pan that is oven safe. If you don't have one, you can cook them on the stove then move them to an oven tray. But it's important that your pan is non-stick. So once your dough has rested, it should have doubled in size and the surface will no longer be sticky. Go ahead and take out some of your anger on the dough and let it deflate. Clean your work surface thoroughly and then sprinkle out a handful of flour onto it. Pour your dough out onto the flour and then start pinching the edges together to form it into a ball. Tuck any misshapen edges under the dough and it should develop a smooth surface. Once you've formed it into a ball, use a bench scraper or a spatula to split the dough into two halves. Cut each half into four equal sized pieces. If one is slightly smaller, just add a piece of dough from a larger piece. Take each piece of dough and roll them in your hands till they form a smooth ball then set them aside. To roll out your dough, grab a ball and then flour it on both sides. Using a rolling pin, you'll roll it out to the size of your pan. Flour your rolling pin so it doesn't stick, then start in the middle of the dough and roll it away from you. When you reach the end, remove the rolling pin and place it in the middle again, then roll it towards you. If you roll back and forth without resetting to the centre each time, your dough is likely to catch on the rolling pin and end up deforming. Once you've stretched the dough out in one direction, lift it up and rotate it 90 degrees, then roll it out again. Do this as many times as it takes to get the dough to stretch to the size of your pan. The dough should be as thin as you can get it, so try choose a large pan, as traditional lahmacun is really thin. If your dough is sticking to the worktop or rolling pin, rub a little bit of flour into the surface, as this will prevent the dough from sticking. Once your dough is rolled out, transfer it to a pizza peel or cake lifter if you have one. If not, line a plate or tray with greaseproof paper and place your dough on it. It's important that the surface be non-stick so your dough does not stick when we apply the meat topping. Add a few heat tablespoons of the topping to your dough and then spread it out into a thin, even layer. Make sure to go as close to the edge of the dough as you can. It helps prevent the dough from burning in the oven while the meat is cooking. I found it easiest to prepare one lahmacun at a time and then while it's cooking prepare the next one. So when you're ready, place your pan on a medium heat on the stove. Now unless you make pizza regularly, sliding the lahmacun off your board into the pan will be immensely difficult. I found that folding the lahmacun in half and then transferring it to the heated pan works great. Place it in the pan and then unfold it, making sure to get it as flat as possible. If some of your meat mixture has moved, spread it back into place as you don't want any bald spots of dough. So your lahmacun is going to cook for 2-3 to three minutes on the stove until the top starts to steam and bubble and the underside develops a small amount of browning. When this happens, remove it from the stove and place it under a preheated grill or in an oven for about 3-4 to four minutes. Remove it from the oven when it has browned on top and the topping looks dry and cooked through. Place it back on the stove and make sure that the bottom is fully cooked. Once it's browned, remove it from the pan and stack them one on top of the other until you have cooked them all. 
It's worth timing how long it takes to reach each stage on your stove and oven so you can have a consistent cook in all of them. Once cooked, you can serve your lahmacun immediately, but letting them rest for 10 minutes will allow the bread to reabsorb some moisture and soften so we can roll them into wraps. I'm serving mine with some freshly chopped salad vegetables and some jajik, a Turkish dip made with cucumber, herbs and yogurt. The traditional way to eat lahmacun is to top it with some fresh parsley. I'm going to add a healthy amount to my wrap. After that, top it with some onions. In this case, the macerated ones we made earlier with sumac. Finally, squeeze on some fresh lemon juice. I think about half a lemon is the perfect amount. Rolling it up, you can see the dough has softened, but it's still beautifully browned underneath. Now obviously you can fill your lahmacun with whatever you want, but make sure to give this combination a try, as it's so incredibly refreshing and zesty. Despite being a meat top flatbread, these are so light and delicious that you could easily have two. These will last a few days in your fridge, or you can freeze them and reheat them in the microwave for a quick snack. Give these a try and let me know how it turns out. I'm always looking for more recipe ideas, so if you have a dish you'd like me to cook, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share and subscribe. As usual, all the ingredients and directions are in the description box, and I'll be back next week with another recipe.